Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there. This is Diamond. I have a little office on Broadway at 53rd Street. And if you happen to be in the neighborhood sometime, you might notice a sign on the door. It reads, Diamond Detective Agency. Yeah, that's how I make a living, such as it is. I sit at my desk behind that door and wait for someone to come in and hire me. Eventually, trouble works its way into someone's life and gives him a shove in my direction. He tells me about it, and I listen with the attitude of a father confessor. When he's done, I dry my eyes and tell him what I think. What I think really doesn't matter, because it's just a shortcut to $100 a day in expenses. Sure, you can hire a guy for less money, but when I work, it's for a price I figure I'm worth. It's got to be that way because sometimes it works a little dirty, and I have to swallow a lot of pride. I get mixed up in everything from simple divorce to muscle-bound homicide, and when trouble can't find me a client, it starts working on yours truly, and I wind up in a corner. I guess trouble figured I was just about due for a squeeze play because one night last week, two lifers in the state pen started working me into their plans. Walsh? What about it, Walsh? Shut up. Wait until the guards pass. Okay. Drag out the cards like we was playing. Sure. Is it uh, set for the night? Yeah. I got the car and everything. Yeah. We'll head for Florida and get across to Cuba. Oh, well, I'd be glad to get out of this uh, three lousy years. Yeah, I got eight behind me. I used every minute figuring how I'm going to take care of a guy. Oh, Walsh, you're not going to start that again. Forget it. Be glad you're getting out. You knock off that guy and you'll never make it to Cuba. Now, look... I figured this whole thing out. I paid out a lot of dough just to make it come off. And when it does, I'm going to kill an ex-cop. And you're going to help me. Me? Yeah. Unless you want to rot here. Oh, you're out of your mind. If this break comes off, it'll be the neatest trick in years. And you want to louse it up by knocking off some guy on the outside? You can stay here and rot if you want to. The only way I take you along is you help me to get a guy named Diamond. Yeah, but you waste a lot of time in New York. They'll have the roads covered by then. Look, just because this diamond guy knocked off your brother in that bank job... You see, you, you bust out of here, it's on my terms. I... Now make up your mind, it's getting late. Okay, give me the layout. <laughs> What is it, Otis? We just got a call, Lieutenant. Two prisoners busted out of Sing Sing, killed two guards. Who are they? Big time. Bob Wells and Charles Walsh. Charles Walsh? Yeah, life. I know, I know. Diamond helped send him up before I took over this department. Otis, get Diamond on the phone. Diamond? Yeah, Diamond. Who'd you think I meant? Little Red Riding Hood? Yeah, yeah Lieutenant. Oh, Diamond, Otis. Bring me my bicarbonate, Otis. Someday I'm going to get good and sore. What did you say? Uh, nothing. Ah, uh, nuts. Now, what's the matter? His office don't answer. Give me that phone. Huh? We've got to find him before Walsh does. Maybe he's over at Helen Asher's house. All right, Otis, stop standing on one foot. You can leave. Miss Asher's residence. Hello, Francis. This is Lieutenant Levinson. Is Diamond there? Why, no, sir, but Miss Asher expects him. Oh, oh wait a moment, sir. Here's Miss Asher. It's Lieutenant Levinson for Mr. Diamond, Miss Helen. Oh, thank you, Francis. Hello, Walt. How are you, Helen? I was looking for Rick. Oh, I was just talking to him. He should be here in about 20 minutes. Why? Uh, will you have him call me right away? Is something wrong? Oh, no, no. Just tell him... Tell him an old friend of his is in town, and I have to talk to him about it. Oh, all right, Walt. I'll tell him. Oh, thanks, Helen. It'll be at least 20 minutes. He's walking over from his office. Okay, Diamond, hold it right there. <laughs> Start walking over to that sedan. Don't you know it's not polite to point? Look, laughing boy, I got a big gun in my pocket. Well, I'm proud of you. 
I thought it was a crossbow. Get moving. Okay. I'd never seen him before. He was a tall guy with a scar on his chin. He walked me over to the sedan and opened the door. He moved in close and shook me down. He relieved me of my 38 and motioned me into the front seat. I slid in and he started to follow, so I kept one leg out in front of me and kicked him in the face. I couldn't get enough leverage to cool him, but it gave me enough time to get out the other door and start making like a miler. I looked over my shoulder and saw him climb out holding a bloody nose. I knew he wouldn't take a shot unless he got close enough to make it count. So when he started after me, I ducked into the subway. I found a dime and went through the turnstile. A train was getting ready to pull out, so I pushed my way on just as the Garnet came down the stairs. He said he wasn't happy to see me go. He didn't even wave goodbye. Wait a minute, you! Wait! Oh, nuts. I know it. You and your swell ideas. What's the matter? I waited for Diamond outside his office, like you said. I started to hustle him in the car, and he kicked me in the face. Oh. I think my nose is you broken. You stupid... I told you to be careful. Yeah, sure you did. You think I like getting booted in the nose? Look, if you want Diamond so much, you get him yourself. Maybe you can tell me how you're going to get to Cuba without me? Hmm? Huh? Oh. Well, what do you want me to do now? I still want Diamond. Yeah, but he jumped the subway train. How am I supposed to find her? I found out he's got a dame over in Park Avenue. Pick her up, bring her over here. Pick her up? I'd have give you the chair for kidnapping. I'll use her to get Diamond. Pick her up if you want to get out of the country. Yeah, but a now, snitch... Look, I it... busted you out of store. I can bust you right back in. No. Now pick her up. Her name is Helen Asher. She lives at 975 Park. Well, what if someone else is there? What if there is? You want me to stop over making a fourth for bridge? Get him out of the way and bring the dame to me. <laughs> Hello, Otis. Well, Diamond. Lieutenant's been looking all over the city for you. I bet you've been a nervous wreck. I wouldn't care if you fell off the George Washington Bridge, Shamus. Why, Otis? And after all, we've been to each other. Uh, nuts. You better go on in and see the lieutenant. Sure. Hey, uh, Sergeant. Yeah? When are you going to get some new shoes? If yours turn up anymore in front, you'll have to ski to work. Uh, Hello, Walt. Rick, we've been looking all over for you. Why don't you cops get on the job? It's getting so it isn't safe for a citizen to walk the streets at high noon. What are you yakking about? Well, I leave my office to go to see Helen and some goon tries to hold me up. Well, you're lucky you didn't get it right then. Do you know who busted out of jail last night? Go on, scare me. Charles Walsh. He swore if he ever did bust out, he'd get you. Well, that explains something. Why, what happened? Well, this character tries to hustle me into a car, so I shoved my foot in his face and beat it into a subway. But it wasn't Walsh. Might have been Bob Wells. He busted out with him. I can tell you in a minute, got a file on him? Sure. Otis, bring in the file on Bob Wells. Right away, Lieutenant. Oh, Walt, do you mind if I use your phone? No, go ahead. I better call Helen. Tell her I'm going to be a little late. Well, I just talked to her and asked her to have you call. Where is everybody? Yes? Francis? Oh, Mr. Diamond. Please hurry over here. Something's happened to Miss Asher. What are you talking about? Miss Asher's been kidnapped. What? Yes, sir. A man came in and made Miss Asher go down to his car at the point of a gun. He also hit me over the head. Was he a tall man with a scar on his chin? Yes, sir. That's right. We'll be right over. Oh, I think the guy that tried to push me around has kidnapped Helen. Oh, no. He pulled a gun on her and slugged Francis. We better get over there. Now, if Charles Walsh is loose... And he's trying to get me, then snatching Helen is a sure way to get me to come around. Hey, uh, where's that file on Bob Wells? Wait a minute. Otis. Yeah, Lieutenant. Haven't you got that file on Wells yet? Yes, sir. I was just bringing it in. Well, step on it. Otis is bringing it in. Here you are, Lieutenant. Let me see it. Hey, now, wait a minute. Oh, shut up, Otis. This is the guy, all right. He's the one who tried to pick me up. Uh, uh, may I take one of these pictures, Walt? Sure, but what are you going to do? I'll well, see if I can find him. You go on over and talk to Francis. See if this is the same guy who took Helen. I'm going to go down to Skid Row and talk to a wise old owl who knows about things like this. I got out of the 5th precinct in a hurry and grabbed a cab for Skid Row. I knew an old deadbeat down there who had a line on every crook in the underworld. 
and there was just a chance he could tell me where Bob Wells was hiding out. His name was Wilbur Truitt, and he hung out in a shabby dive called the Parrot. Hello, Wilbur. What? He got you at the piano, strike up a chorus of my buddy, for the wandering boy has returned. Look, Wilbur... I, I would rise and bow from the waist as befits the occasion, but I fear that some sterno I accidentally came in contact with has rusted my spine, and I am forced to remain in a sitting position. I haven't got time to listen to the routine, Wilbur. I- I'm looking for someone. Here, take a look at this picture. Ever see this guy? Unless I have my morning constitutional buck... I can bring nothing into focus but a large bottle and a straw. Oh, oh waiter. Waiter, uh, give me a bottle. You have arrived in the nick of time. I get that wonderful warm glow when you ask for a whole bottle. A snap comparison would be that of a happy mother smiling blissfully at a nursing babe. Okay, well, but now tell me, uh, 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 do you know this man? One sip of strength, and I shall have the eyes of a carrot-stuffed feline. Now, ah, yes, I can see the gentleman clearly. In fact, my vision has so greatly improved it begins to take on the functions of an X-ray. For instance, I can readily perceive that the man in question is addicted to false stimulants, and his low brow and squinty eyes tell me that he is indeed a person of some doubtful character. You're looking in the mirror. No, here, here's this picture. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Mr. Bobby Wells. The description is flexible. Know where I can find him? Up until yesterday, he was residing at an institution upstate. Sing Sing, I believe. It is very possible that he is hiding out in one of his old haunts on 23rd Street, but uh, I couldn't say for sure. Oh, why not? Uh, This bottle you purchased entitles you to one of my best Yes, To be absolutely accurate, I would need further inducement. It's the risk, bucko. Uh, bring me another jug, bartender. Ah, bless you. Try looking in a rooming house at 533 West 23rd Street. Now, if you don't mind, I shall forget the necessity for long conversations and begin to concentrate on the work ahead of me. Goodbye, Bucko, and stop in again. Say tomorrow morning if you wake up feeling charitable. I left Wilbur trying to figure the best way to parlay the two bottles and headed for the address he'd given me. It was a typical apartment house of the district, a four-story building with a high premium insurance policy. I asked the landlady if a Bob Wells lived there, and she told me a man answering his description had taken a room there that morning. She told me he'd gone out a few minutes before, and she let me into his room. I told her to keep a lookout and warn me if he showed. Then I started looking. I tore the place apart, but I didn't come up with a thing. I spotted the phone and started to call Walt, and that's when I saw it. A pad lying by the base of the phone with a heavy imprint left from the writing on the top sheet. I pulled an old trick. I took a pencil and rubbed the lead lightly over the imprint, and up came one telephone number. I dialed it and waited. Weinberg's delicatessen. Oh, uh, is Bob Wells there? Oh? Bob Wells. Well, I heard of him. Thanks. Well, it's like that. One minute you think you've got a lead hot enough to melt your change purse, and the next you find yourself looking like a tree surgeon in Death Valley. But in my business, it takes a conventional three to strike you out. So I found the address of the delicatessen, and 15 minutes later, I was standing between a smoked herring and a three-foot salami talking with Mr. Weinberg. What can I do for you, sir? Oh, uh, I talked with you, oh, say, 20 minutes ago about a Mr. Bob Wells. Bob Wells? Oh, yes. Never heard of him. Uh, Take a look at this picture. Maybe you know the face and not the name. It's familiar. Yes, I think I've seen him somewhere. Think hard now. This is important. Are you a policeman? Detective. Oh, how about it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So long as you're a cop. Sure, I remember him. He came to my store last night. I remember because I had already closed and he kept pounding on the door. Finally, I let him in. He was very rude. He bought a lot of groceries, but very rude. Have you seen him again? Sure, he came in this morning and bought locks and bagels. Still rude. Hmm. Where's your phone? In the back. Has, uh, 
This Mr. Wells done something? He left Sing Sing without saying goodbye to the warden. Uh, ha. Now, look, uh, I'm going in the back and use your phone. If Wells happens to come in while I'm back there, stall him and come back and tip me off. I'll do my best. But he better not be rude. Hey, Walt, I'm in a delicatessen over on 24th Street. Yeah, Rick. I traced Wells this far, found out he's been buying food here, probably for Walsh. You think Walsh is hiding somewhere in the neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, that's my guess. They probably took separate places so they could move in a hurry if one hideout got hot. I'll be over there right away. Good. Comfortable, honey, but no yelling. Or I'll have to stuff up that pretty mouth. I don't understand this. Why did you kidnap me? I've been having a hard time getting in touch with your boyfriend, Diamond. I figure if his girl's in trouble, he'll come looking. I I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> sure, sure. Play it straight. But you watch. Tonight I call your butler and tell him we got you. If Diamond wants you alive, he comes to a spot I got picked up. And he comes along. I don't know any diamond. Ain't she cute, Bobby? Yeah, cute. Want me to fix her so she forgets how to lie? No, I don't care if she claims diamonds are uncle. <laughs> Go on down to Delicatessen and get some food. I'm getting hungry. Okay. But I still think we ought to be getting out of town. In one hour, I call this dame's house. At 12 o'clock, I meet Diamond in the park. Then we get out. Why do you want to see uh, this diamond? Oh, we're old friends, baby. He sent me up for life, and he shot my kid brother full of holes. I just want to see that Diamond gets everything that's coming to him. You talk too much. You've got some bad habits yourself. Now get that food. And if you're too lazy to walk downstairs, I'll show you a shortcut. Uh, Three floors, straight down. You can jump for it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. What can Weinberg do for you? Hey, Lieutenant, that chopped liver sure looks good. Keep your fat hooks off of that, Otis. Walt. Oh, yeah, Rick? Back here. All right. The storekeeper is watching out for Wells. If he shows, he'll come back here and tip us. I parked the squad car two blocks over. I didn't want Wells or Walsh to think something was up. Where's Otis? Otis! I'll be right with you, Lieutenant. I'm just buying something to nibble on. Mm. His nibble would grind up a whole cow. If Wells comes in and spots a cop, he'll take off like a jackrabbit. Hold it, Walt. It's huh? a that guy coming across the street. Looks like Wells. Oh. Otis, get away from that door. Huh? I can't hear you, Lieutenant. A man's coming in the store. Get away from the door. He is? You want me to hide? No, you idiot. Just play it smart like you didn't know him. But get away from the door so he'll come in. Oh. Okay, Lieutenant. Leave it to me. Oh. Walt Duck. Good evening. What can the Weinberg do for you? Uh, I'll have a couple of sandwiches. Hey, try the salami. It's great. Huh? Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, make it salami. Call slot. Uh, pickle beer. Nice pickle. night. Listen, uh, idiot. Yeah, sure. Master. Uh, he's doing fine, uh, Walt. Relax. You live around here? Oh. Huh? No, uh, just seeing a sick friend. Yeah. Uh, maybe that salami ain't such a good idea if your friend's sick. You know, I had an uncle with ulcers. He couldn't touch the stuff. It's too much garlic. Ketchup? No. My friend's got a cold. Oh. Well, then I don't guess it'll hurt him, but... You know, the best thing for a cold is good mustard plaster. And now, you, you, you take the Here's plaster... Here's your sandwiches, sir. Sixty cents. Sixty? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Hope your friend gets better. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, come on. How did I do, Lieutenant? Well, one thing is sure. He thought you were too stupid to recognize him. Can you still see him, Rick? Yeah. Yeah, he crossed the street and he's starting to walk west. I'll tell him. He knows you. Good. When you spot the place, call me here. Think I should throw a net around the neighborhood? Not till we spot the hideout. Right. Hey, Diamond. They got your girl. How are you going to get her out? They probably use her for a shield. That's a good point, Sergeant. Believe me, I've been thinking about it. <laughs> the sandwiches. Swell. Hey, mm. you only got two. Oh, there was a cop in the delicatessen. A cop? Yeah, big stupid one. Listen, 
I, I told him I'm getting food for a sick friend, see? And he starts giving me all kinds you of... You sure remi- you weren't tailed? Tailed? No, who tailed me? Cop stayed in a delicatessen. Okay. Here, honey. Have a sandwich. I'm not hungry. Oh. Suit yourself. Here, Bobby. Oh, thanks. Hey, when are you going to put in that call of this dame's butler? Right after we eat. Then we go to the park and wait for Mr. Diamond. Yeah? I'm in a drugstore across from the building that Wells went in. It's about a block away. Nifty drug. Block west on your side of the street. I'll wait inside. We'll be right down. Come on, Otis. The lieutenant hasn't spotted. Okay. Thanks for the bagel, White Break. That's all right, officer. Come back again when you can pay for it. Come on, Otis. Move your big feet. Okay, okay. Hey, you got any brilliant ideas how we're going to get Helen out of there in one piece? No, I got to admit I'm stuck. Why don't you get that bear trap mind of yours working and make yourself a hero? Uh, well, maybe we could start a fire in the building. It'd have to come out. Oh, swell, swell. There's nothing I'd like better than a well-done girlfriend. Well, I was trying. Yeah. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Otis, remind me to kiss you on both cheeks. Hey, what are you doing? That's a firebox. I'm turning in an alarm. There. There. Oh, we're going to start that fire? No, but Walsh and Wells won't know there isn't one. When the trucks come and the firemen bust in the place, they'll think it's burning down around their ears. Yeah, maybe then they won't watch Helen too close, huh? Ah, that's the idea. Well, here's the nifty drugstore. Yeah. Rick, I've been worrying about something. Yeah, I know. How do we get Helen out? Yeah. Well, relax. Otis came up with a solution. Otis? Yeah, I turned in a fire alarm. And when the trucks get here, you can tell them what's up and they can go in the building and make like it was on fire. Well, won't Walsh know it's a phony if he can't smell smoke? The chief can tell him it's blazing in the basement. When they hit the street, we can get enough firemen to shield Helen and then take Walsh and Weld. I'll call a precinct and have the blocks around it. We'll need lights if they make a break for it. Uh, which apartment house are they in? That one, across the street. After I call the boys, we better go over and find out which room they're in. Quietly clear the rooms on both sides in case the shooting starts before we expect it. <laughs> I like to upsets my stomach. How about that call? Yeah, right. Well, what's your phone number, baby? It's in the book. Oh. She gonna be troubled, Bobby? <coughs> he wants your number. Now, come on. We ain't got all night. All right. Evergreen 54308. Oh, that's better. You ought to be more careful, Bobby. Your lip's bleeding. Yeah. Hey, Walsh. What's that? Sirens. Maybe that's the cops. If somebody tailed you, you... I told you I wasn't tailed. Wait, I'll go see. That's fire trucks. They're coming down a block. I don't smell no smoke. Hey, they're pulling up in front of this building. The joint must be on fire. Let's get out of here. Uh, maybe it's the building next to us. No, they're bringing the hoses right in front of the door of this joint. I'm getting out. Sit still. Maybe it ain't a big one. We can't go busting out in the street. Well, maybe it ain't a big one. But if it is, I don't want to end up like a pound of spare ribs. <laughs> Why, you... Yeah. All right, now, come on. Hey, what's that? Yeah, what is it? Fire department, we're back here from the building. What are we going to do with the dame? Shove her in that closet. Just a minute, we'll be right with you. Hurry, Tom, there's a fire in the basement snooting a gas man. The whole place may go up any second. Did you hear that? Yeah, step on it. Okay. Hey, better step on it, down these stairs. We can find our way. Hey, there's a couple of prowl cars. Yeah. Separate. We'll meet at the other place. Okay, Walsh. That's far enough. Ah. It's the shamus. Get him, Walsh. Don't reach for it, Walsh. I owe you something, Diamond. You all right, Rick? Yeah, Walsh. He's a worse shot than his brother. Where's Wells? He made a break for it, but he won't get through. All right, Wells. You can't get through. Drop your gun. You won't take me, copper! Well, that's that. What about Walsh? Uh, He's pretty dead. Come on, I want to find out what happened to Helen. Well, Walt and I went up to the room and found Helen in the closet. We took her downstairs and she cried a little on my shoulder. I like that. Makes me feel so protective. 
Walt cleaned things up and dropped Helen and me off at her place. An hour later, Helen got back to normal and we relaxed on the couch and forgot about Wells and Walt. <sighs> How do you feel now, baby? Daddy. Want me to get Francis to fix some dinner for you? Oh, no, I'm not very hungry. But you can have some if you want. Mm, no, no. Want to play some canasta or something? You always said it was a bad 200 game. Yeah, it is. Well, I forgot my jack. <laughs> Silly. Want a neck? Ooh, what you said. Come here. No. Helen. No, I'm mad. Mad? What for? Because those two thugs ruined a wonderful evening. What's the matter? Want me to go? Oh, you idiot, of course not. I had a big surprise planned. You did? Yes. Believe it or not, I had two wonderful seats for South Pacific, and now it's too late to go. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, well, I'm sorry, baby. I'd love to have seen it. Me, too. Well, I'm not exactly Ezio Pinza, but I'll try to make it up to you. Oh, Rick, that's a wonderful idea. Well, what'll it be? Uh, some enchanted evening. Oh, really? Me, 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 me. Hmm. A some enchanted evening. You may see a stranger. You may see a stranger across a crowded room. Rick. What's the matter? I was just trying to make like pizza. But, honey, it's safer for you to make like diamond. Oh. And somehow you know. You know even then. That somewhere you'll see her again and again. Oh, you're not Pinza, but it's wonderful. Thanks. Some enchanted evening. Someone may be laughing. You may hear her laughing across a crowded room. And night after night, as strange as it seems, the sound of her laughter will sing in your dream. Rick. Who can explain it? Who can tell you why? Ricky. Fools give you answers. Wise men never try. Oh, Rick. Oh, honey, what's the matter? I was just falling in love with myself. Come here. You never let me finish. Do you mind? Oh, well, no. And I'm sure Mr. Pinza doesn't either. have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Paul Fries, and Larry Dobkin. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by William P. Rousseau. Now this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.